Welcome back to Newsday here on Arise News. The Labour Party's candidate in Nigeria's presidential race is giving a major speech in less than an hour from now at London's prestigious think tank, Chatham House. Peter Obi has support from many of Nigeria's young, but critics say that he lacks enough backing from across the country to become president. Arise News chief correspondent joins us now from outside of Chatham House. Good to see you, John. Thank you for joining us on Newsday. What are we likely to hear from Mr. OB today? Hi there, and a very good afternoon to you from uh, Chatham House, where Peter Obi is due to speak in uh, about half an hour from now to run through his manifesto. And as you can see around me, quite a lot of uh, OB supporters here who believe that he can become president, including uh, Professor Patatomi. Professor, welcome to Newsday. Thank you very much. What chance has your candidate got of winning, do you think? A very big, very strong chance. I mean, this is clear from the fact that the Nigerian people are clearly looking for something different, something new. Um, we've had years of political parties that have promised and not delivered. And that's not strange. I expected that they would not be able to deliver because of the very structure of the parties. It's got nothing to do with the people. The structure of the parties as such, that there are transactions, arrangements. These are classic machine politics kind of contraptions, the kind of political parties we have in Nigeria, the traditional ones, the PDP, the APC. But you, you, you're talking about a revolution now, aren't you, in Nigerian politics. Is he the man to do that? He, he was governor, he was a good governor, but he doesn't have uh, cabinet experience, he doesn't have the political experience, does he, to become president? You know one of the amazing things about how people discuss Nigeria is that we have these people who have one year's experience repeated 30 times, and they claim they have 30 years' experience. What we need is fresh thinking. We need to ensure that that experience is out of the way because that's what's kept Nigeria down. We need a new way of solving problems. And in many ways, what Peter Rubi did in Nambra was bring that thinking. That bringing the thinking to the table prevented a state that for years had been governed by people who were kidnapped by the godfathers, locked up in toilets, a state in which uh, no pensions were paid, a state in which schools were shut for nearly two years because salaries were not being paid to teachers and so on and so forth. And in a couple of years, he took that state whose performance was uh, 26 out of 30 something states in the country to number one. In less than three years. Now, I've read his manifesto. It's an ambitious manifesto. Education for all, leveling up of Nigeria, uh, improve the econ economic lives of all Nigerians. Hold on a minute. But look, Nigeria's got roaring inflation at the moment, 20%, something like that. Growth is expected to be only around 2 or 3% this year. Where's the money? Where's the trillions of dollars, trillions of dollars he's going to That's need to fulfill his manifesto? Absolutely. If you can only but shut down the hemorrhage, you will know that you have much more money than you actually want to get things done in Nigeria. We are bleeding so much, and just any seriousness will lead to a stemming of that hemorrhage, and the resources will be there. Uh, that's one thing. Secondly, if we begin to produce, I let me just take one sector, the maritime sector. The kind of people who run Nigeria today, their mindset is, Maritime sector is cash cow. You send your friends to go and steal money. That's the only word to call it. So you send them to Nimasa, you send them to Nigerian Ports Authority. Um, Paul Collier at Oxford was my guest to speak about ocean facing cities in Nigeria uh, in 2017. Do you know Nigeria's coastline? If we just got serious people to run the maritime, Nigeria will make 50 times as much money as it makes from crude oil for just running that sector. But those who run Nigeria today, all they'd see is who can they send to go and milk the system, rather than who can build that into a money machine. Can we talk about corruption? Because corruption is, is, is a phenomenon of, of Nigerian politics. Peter is not going to bribe voters in, in the same way as the other major parties are likely to do. 
Is this not another reason why he, he, he won't win this time? Because the people have woken up to the fact that that 2,000, 3,000 that they collect has been the source of their servitude. And that the time is now to say, as the Argentinian brave bull said in front of Muhammad Ali, no mas, enough, no more. So I think that the realization, you know, not just coming from young people, who, by the way, constitute a significant part of the population. Nigeria is a country, median age, what, 18? And they know how their future has been squeezed by this corruption. Well, well it all it needs the Muslim vote as well. Is, it, is he like, as, as a, a devout Catholic, is he likely to get the Muslim vote? No, Catholics love Muslims. There's nothing against them. And I don't think Muslims dislike Catholics by any chance. I think what it is, as Peter Rubin himself likes to say, the price of bread is not going to be different for Muslims as it is for Christians. And so the needs of all humans are the same. And we've got people, I just watched a video of a, a physician who's a professor who's from Katsina, who's talking about the mess of the last couple of years and saying the people have to say, these kind of people should not be allowed to govern us again. He was not campaigning. He was just talking about the reality of what we should focus on in these elections. The people in those places that they use these uh, uh, funny games to make vote for them are the ones who have been the most hurt. The violence has been significantly in northern Nigeria. It's everywhere. Significantly in northern Nigeria. People who have been hurt the most by it are those Muslims. People who have been hurt the most <laughs> by this poverty that is crippling. Look, um, Nigerian uh, uh, statistics people put out uh, a measure of poverty in, in Nigeria. Literally every state of the north is below the national average. Only two states in the south, <coughs> Ebony and Enugu, joined the northern states in that level of poverty. It is the people in the north who should be saying, Peter, Obi, Peter, Obi, because they need him more than anybody else needs him. Professor, it's nearly time to go inside. It's been a pleasure talking to you, and thanks very much indeed. Thanks for joining us on Arise News.